Hello, this is David Politis, founder and CEO here at Better Cloud. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. And you're joining us today for the webinar, Security Threats, IT Had to Drop Everything to Fix, and the Policies You Need to Remediate Them. Um, this is a really uh, important webinar, one for, for me that's important in terms of education for our community, and I'm really excited about it. Um, we've been working on this for a while, so uh, with that, I'm going to jump right into it. And uh, if you have questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to ask them either in the GoToWebinar app, which is in the top right of your screen, or you can ask them in Better IT, which is our Slack community for IT professionals. So why are we the experts? Why should you be listening to us and, and listening to our advice and, and the stories that we have to tell um, about these security threats? And, and the reason for that is because we have invested a lot in, in policies in our platform. Our, pol our platform is truly centered around policies. And we're, not, we're gonna spend the beginning part of this conversation and this presentation is gonna be about customer stories and things that we've uncovered in people's environments that, that really made IT drop everything to go and fix. Um, but, and we're also gonna talk about how our platform plays into that. And ultimately I'm gonna show you a, a quick demo of our product. But the core of our platform, it's, it's around policies. That's where we've been making investments. Our first policy feature, if you will, came out in 2013. And that was really around saving people time. It was around automating work, routine work that people had. And that has now evolved into real heavy duty, complex security policies for, uh, for the IT environment. When we started in 2013 with our first policy feature, that was really around G Suite exclusively. Today, we're doing that for G Suite plus 10 other SaaS applications. And through this effort and through the focus around policies, we have identified a number of blind spots in our customers' environments and have exposed those blind spots through these policies to our customers. So we've been spending a lot of time and energy in this area and going extremely deep and granular. And, and again, the evolution here is that we've gotten more and more granular. And as we do with get more granular and deeper with our policies, we're uncovering I'd argue scarier and scarier things and 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 more risky um, threats inside of organizations. So with that, um, you know what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend time jumping into a number of stories, very specific stories that I hope help you understand and think about how these things may be occurring in your environment um, and ways that you may be able to to address them. So the customer stories I'm going to go through, these are only from the last six months. So this is a this is a short window just to give you an idea of the number. I mean, we have hundreds of stories like this, and we've selected uh, just a few to point out some very specific use cases. So let me start with an online media company. This company, I believe, is uh, approximately 1,500 employees. And when we went into that environment, and when we first put Better Cloud in that environment, installed it in their environment, specifically into Dropbox, we identified 36,000 files that were shared publicly. Now, there, these 36,000 files, these were files in, in some cases, these were their clients' files that they had shared with them. Uh, these may have been episodes of TV shows before they were aired. Uh, this was uh, materials that, that, they're, that they had created for their clients for campaigns. Um, and these were shared publicly by mistake. This was not malicious. This was by mistake, but this is their client's information that was shared publicly through Dropbox. Um, and, and, this ended up, you know, when we did a deeper dive, it was some client information. And then there also happened to be some employee information shared there as well. Um, so there were some personnel files um, in, in that 36,000. And what we did with Better Cloud is we we went in and we we corrected those settings and we remediated that and brought those settings back under control and back into uh, the the entitlements back the way that the the organization intended them to be. Um, 
we then d dug a little deeper and we started finding groups where people from outside the organization could post. So essentially email distribution lists. And then we found something that we're finding in, I'd say 90% of the environments that we install better cloud into, which is the somebody, and in many cases, many people forwarding corporate email to personal Gmail accounts. And so in this case, one of the highest ranking people in this online media company, in this organization, was forwarding everything. Every single email hitting the corporate inbox was then hitting the personal Gmail account, was being forwarded to the personal Gmail account. And if you think about this, the this is loss of IP. This, again, could be client data that's going out of the organization and into someone's personal inbox. In media especially, people move around a lot. And so for somebody to have all that information, all the client, not only the data, but the contacts at that client, um, this, is, this is really bad. And you know, we were able to build policies, back to my point about policies, we were able to build policies to lock down all of that, the file sharing, the email forwarding, the group settings. So we were able to do that. But the the challenge here is that when you when you see something like this, first of all, the risk is high. And second of all, this is ultimately comes down to IT's responsibility. It, and it doesn't mean... Um, in most cases, our customers and the IT professionals we work with, they don't have the visibility and the control uh, that they need in order to, to identify these threats. But at the end of the day, they're the ones responsible and they're the ones that the CEO or the CIO, or whoever it may be, come down on when there's an issue. And so this is, this is something very common. What I just talked to you about there, very common. We worked with a research firm. This one is very scary. This is a research firm uh, that has a lot of funding behind them, hundreds of millions of dollars. And one of their employees who uh, was had access to some very sensitive information left to go to a competitor. And this woman shared a, a set of drive files, the, the specific set of files that happened to be the organization's core strategy documents and shared the files directly with her new corporate email address at the number two competitor of this organization. Think about that. That is not even downloading the file. That is sharing the file, a live Google Doc file, meaning that as that doc is being edited, this person who's working at this competitor months later in this case is seeing the that document change and all the strategy changes. And the, think about that. I mean, that is, I mean, in this particular case, this has resulted in a lawsuit. There's a lot of other things happening around this. But again, we're seeing this across the board. We're seeing people who are, I mean, think about just straight sharing the file with a, with their new email address at the competitor. And now, of course, there's downloading a Salesforce lead file. There's, I mean, people are doing a lot. There's the Uber Waymo example of someone going into Google Drive and downloading all of the important documents and just taking it with them. So this is really scary. And again, when when this was exposed to to our to our customer, once they put Better Cloud in place, of course, the IT team, they literally dropped everything. They jumped off the call that we were on and they went and spoke right to their CEO. And this is, a, this is a large, large organization. And they went straight to the CEO to say, I need to tell you something that we just identified. Somebody who left three months ago has had access to these three very important strategy documents. And we were able to revoke that sharing access, but more importantly, ultimately they gave us the names of their top five competitors and we put them into our platform and we created policies to lock down specific sharing to those competitors. We were working with a hospitality technology company and they were using Okta to deprovision users. And um, what happened was they were deprovisioning, but they weren't actually removing the licenses. So they had 1300 suspended licenses and they were paying $120 a year for those licenses. This is that middle skew of, of G Suite. And so we helped create a policy to offboard those users. When a user is, is deprovisioned in Okta, 
we transfer the data to their manager or to a coworker and everything, their data, their calendars, their groups, their files. Um, and we allowed them ultimately to fully delete the licenses and end up saving them $156,000 a year. Now, this may not seem to some people in, it's not necessarily a, a security threat, um, but this is one where IT dropped everything to do this as well because you're talking about $156,000 a year. And that's on G Suite, which is one of the cheapest SaaS applications in the world. You look at an application like Salesforce, we've seen organizations, there's one organization where they were overspending by $2 million a year on Salesforce licenses. And, and we can help to remove those. And that, again, may not be a security threat, but if, 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 if it becomes clear that there's that much uh, unused spend, uh, again, that's going to come down on IT. There was a real estate organization we were working with and their payroll group. So this is payroll at realestatecompany.com. And this is a big real estate company, one of the bigger organizations that's on G Suite. And they had their payroll group was open to the public for external members to join. And this is all the payroll processing went through this email distribution list. Just think about that. And so we obviously fixed that. But then we went in and we found that there were 200 people forwarding their email to their personal Gmail accounts. Again, this is rampant. This is almost in every organization that we deploy into, we are identifying this. Then there were 24 super admins. This may be the worst of all the items. 24 super admins, which by the way already is too much. And then six of those people no longer work for the company and they were active with super admin privileges. Again, the number of times we see these things, and this is not, this is SaaS applications, this is custom applications. The number of times we're seeing people leave organizations and still have access, it's, it, it's, it is definitely scary. But if it's a super admin who is leaving and still has full super admin rights, keys to the, you know, the, the nuclear keys, you know, th that is something that um, that's scary. And and what we're seeing is that this number should be the 24 super admins. Even that should be close to three or four. And in the past, when we've done these webinars and I've surveyed the audience, what I found is that when I ask how many super admins do you think you have in your organization, most people will answer that question saying one to two super admins per SaaS applications, maybe three. But then if we go look on the back end at number of super admins per SaaS application, on average, the number is 15. Again, most people, and I assume if I asked you the same question, you would tell me you have somewhere between two, three, four super admins per SaaS application. I bet if we install BetterCloud and we look, that there will be somewhere between 10 and 15 per SaaS application, and that's too many. And so this is a big, big risk. So one of the things that we did here is we not only removed the super admin access very quickly, but we created policies so that every time email forwarding happens, every time a super admin is created, anytime any of those things occur, we create Zendesk tickets, which in this case, um, th that's what they were using for their help desk, we create Zendesk tickets and assign them out so that people can go and look into that and whether they want to remediate that. In this particular case, they didn't want to automate that, but they wanted an a, a audit trail essentially of that. Then we were working with a HRIS uh, company. Uh, I think this was about 600 people. And the challenge here was that with Slack, and again, I think many of you today probably can feel this pain is that something like slack or dropbox or salesforce that starts usually in a particular area of the business a specific department usually that when that starts to go org wide the uh, best practices if you will around security and management and all of that is not in place because if the engineering org stands up slack that's they're not going to care necessarily about how they onboard and off people offboard people and how they handle the file security and so 
in this case, this organization, that's what happened. Slack started in engineering. It spread across the whole org. And by the time that it got to IT to manage, uh, no one really owned it. And there was never a clear line uh, of ownership. And they had found out they had 300 people, 300 ex-employees who still had full Slack access. Full. This is not suspended. This is people who could log into Slack for this organization, talk to their colleagues, read whatever uh, news was coming out, uh, troll through the channels. I mean, 300 people who no longer worked at the company, in some cases, people who hadn't worked there in over a year. It, it was amazing. And again, this is something that uh, I, I believe, when, again, when I've polled our community of IT leaders and I've said, do you believe that there are people who no longer work at your organization that still have access to corporate data? The answer overwhelmingly is yes, overwhelmingly. But the number of people who they think have access is usually 10 people, five people, but not 300 people or 2,000 people, and we've seen those numbers. And and again, this this it depends what type of organization you are. It depends where you are in your life cycle. Y you may or may not think that this is worth dropping everything to fix. If you're in an organization that wants to go public at some point, if you're in an organization that has SOC 2 certification, if you're in an organization that cares about GDPR, if you're in any kind of organization like that, well, this, you have to drop everything. Otherwise, you'll lose your certifications. Uh, we have an organization, Public SaaS Company, that lost their SOC 2 certification because their offboarding was taking three weeks. And at least they were offboarding. And it was taking three weeks to offboard someone. Here, we, this organization wasn't even offboarding. So we created a policy to automatically offboard people as soon as, as, soon as they're, they're uh, uh uh, fired or, or leave the organization, they get off boarded. Um, we had another, a media company, thousand employees, 200 apps, um, HR and IT not really talking to each other and new hires would show up without warning and basically would get nothing. And again, maybe not so much a security thing, but, but similar to, um, what I mentioned before about money and, and, and saving money on unused licenses, I think this is also, this is something that especially modern IT, you, you, you want that user experience to be awesome. You want someone to start an organization in that first day, it makes a big difference to their impression of the organization and, and IT has a big play, role to play in that. And so in this case, and we've seen this again, many places, new hires show up and there's no warning. And, we help to create an automated policy where someone gets onboarded in Namely and they, we automatically send an email to IT and we create their account in Gmail and we get Slack and Dropbox up and running. And we were able to reduce onboarding time by uh, a lot, but more importantly, we were able to really make that experience for their end users much better because you can imagine if someone starts an organization and for two days can't do any work, can't get to their email, can't, that's, that's bad for the organization. That's bad for that, you, that person. That's bad for the manager who just hired that person. Um, and it looks really bad on IT. So before we keep going here, I'm just going to quickly ask a poll. As you can tell from what I've been talking about, I like to ask these polls. It helps us understand the audience we're talking to. So here, the, the poll I want to ask is, which of the following user activities in your environment would be most detrimental if they happened? So users downloading sensitive files, users forwarding corporate email to personal email accounts is the example I was giving before, suspicious logins that occur outside of approved IP addresses, compromised accounts, uh, I mean devices, I apologize, devices, or Chrome extensions, Slack bots, kind of these third-party OAuth apps um, that have access. So, um, I'll let everyone take a second here to vote. So again, users downloading sensitive files is the first choice. Users forwarding corporate email to personal email accounts, suspicious logins that are occurring outside of some approved IP addresses, compromised devices, or risky third-party, let's call them kind of OAuth applications. So we're at about, we're already at 55% voted. So we'll let, if you're listening in the background, um, would love if you would 
come to the foreground. This this poll should be in your uh, at the front of your screen right now. So if you just give me a quick vote here, and then by the way, I'm going to show the results here, so you'll actually see what your colleagues and your peers uh, how how they vote. So. Um, We're just going to, one more second. Okay, almost there. We're at 70%. I know some people listen to these webinars in the background, so I apologize. I just, um, okay, let me go ahead and show the results. So here you go. Um, so the number one result, users downloading sensitive files, followed by users forwarding corporate email to personal email accounts, along with the risky third-party applications, and then suspicious logins. So this is almost exactly the way, th the last time we put up this poll, we actually did the same webinar yesterday with a different set of, I think we had about 150 people or so on that, and it was the same the same distribution almost exactly. It's really, it is really, really interesting to do these polls and see the same results with a different set of people. I, I, this is, it, it, it shows that this is, this is accurate. I mean, this is how people are feeling um, about their environment. Okay, this is awesome. Thank you. So let me go back here to my presentation. So, what I want to talk about is when we think about a policy, these are the three stages that we think about in a policy. This is how we we structure our policies. This is how we suggest others, our customers structure theirs. So the first stage is investigation. The first stage of a policy is you have to go into the data. You have to expose and, and look at and filter through and audit all of the, the uh, items or data objects or users that are violating this policy that you've put in place. So let's use the example of email forwarding. You set an, uh, a policy that says nobody can forward their corporate email to personal Gmail accounts or to any account outside of our corporate environment or domain. So once you do that, that's your policy. That, that's your stated policy. You put that, let's say, into Better Cloud. Now we're going to return back to you all the people who are forwarding their corporate email outside of the organization. Once you get that information, now you have to investigate that. And you look through that and you say, who are these people? Um, is this someone who should be able to do this? I mean, in most organizations, I don't know why you would need forwarding outside of the corporate domain but pretend that you did, you wanna do some investigation to understand what that looks like. Maybe in this case, executives are allowed to, which even that, I'm not sure you would allow, but pretend that you do. You now would tweak that in, in, in that policy a little bit to say, nobody can forward corporate email outside of the domain unless they belong to the executive OU. So once you've done that investigation and you've gotten that policy right, now you're gonna go into to remediate because there's probably debt building up. That again is what we see in the environments when we get installed is we notice that there's debt that has been building up over time and that people can, can um, you, you need to do a, essentially a massive cleanup one time to get yourself to a good state, a clean state. And so the second step is to remediate. So now you're going to go through, look at the 100 people who are forwarding their corporate email to their personal accounts, and you're going to go ahead and kill the forwarding for all of those people. So now you've put your environment in a good place. That right there is definitely what I would say you need to drop everything to do. If you find one of the, th the, the uh, threats, um, one of the exposures, one of the issues that I showed earlier, I would suggest that you have to do phase one and phase two of a policy, you have to get to a clean state. Now, once you get to a clean state, the ultimate is to get to automated enforcement. That is the ultimate. That is the goal. That's the utopia. If you think about it, that's the only way that you're going to be able to respond to security incidences at scale. There's no way you, you, can, you can respond at scale across the sprawl of applications unless you automate that. And so that debt, you can clean that up by remediating, but it will build back up. I'll give another example with the super admin example. We see this a lot. We see someone start, 
they they're in IT, they're the help desk, they get a ticket for Dropbox and they ask the Dropbox admin, can you make me an admin? Now they're an admin and they go through, you know, they're as an admin, even though they don't need those permissions forever. And at the end of that process, they still have admin rights. Maybe you go through a policy, you remediate, you remove their admin permissions. That's really good. You get to a clean state. The issue is next time a ticket comes into a different help desk person, they're going to ask for the exact same permissions. They're again going to get permissions that they don't, they shouldn't have, they don't need. It doesn't follow least privilege. And so unless you build enforcement and automation, you can't keep your environment clean and you can't know because you, you can't do reports every week and go in. There's too much happening to do all of that manually. You need probably four X the people on your team. Now for us, we're continuing to double down on these policies. And so what you've been hearing from me and all the stories I'm telling so far about our customers have been about state-based alerting, state-based triggers. So for example, someone has a role. It's either end user, admin, owner, whatever the role is, but that is the state that the user is in. File permissions. They're going to have some kind of permission, either they're private, they're public, they're shared public, uh, they're shared with a with 10 people, but there's some state that they're in. Group permissions, email forwarding, is it enabled, disabled, uh, multi-factor, enabled, disabled. So these are all things that are state-based. But what we've been hearing, and you, this group right here on the webinar showed this in that poll, is that really activity-based is extremely important. Understanding users' activity is extremely important. So we see this with logins, right? Talking about uh, logins outside of an approved uh, IP range. That is really important. That That is an activity-based uh, alert that you need to be monitoring activity to understand if that occurred. Uh, the the number one item from that poll was downloading files, sensitive files. That's not a state that the file is in. You're not going to be able to look at the state of the file. You have to actually look at the activity on that file. And so that's what we do from uh, that's that's where we're starting to to invest is in activity based alerting so that we can see was this file deleted, downloaded, uh, accessed, whatever it may be. Third-party applications, same thing. Did someone just install a Slack bot that has permissions to read all conversations? Um, devices, was it, was it compromised? Was it registered, unregistered? So this is activity-based, not state-based. And this, this for us is a major evolution in our platform. This was the number one requested feature last year at Altitude. Altitude is our annual conference. And last year, we did something we had never done before, which is our product managers got on stage and showed a wide variety of features and functionality that we could invest in. And we presented that to the audience. And the audience was made up essentially mostly of customers. And we presented that and we had them vote on which feature, what functionality they would like us to deliver uh, next. And the number one request was activity-based alerting, activity-based triggers. So that is where we've been investing. And it has really truly been a game changer because now when you start doing this investigation and you start looking into your environments, you start seeing people, for example, downloading a file, you know, downloading 50 files in the, in 30 minutes, That that has to be a red flag. That has to be something that you drop everything to go and address. Um, you you can see if uh, somebody logged in outside of an approved IP address range. I'll tell you a story that that I heard that was um, really pretty scary because I think this may be happening more than I even realized, which is there was an, a company in California that hired a contractor to do some work for them in California. And it was a one person shop, one man shop. And they hired this person and they said, can you do this work? Gave them credentials to Salesforce. And then that person actually outsourced the work via Upwork to someone in India. And this organization, it took them a while 
but they started seeing that that account was logging in from India, not San Francisco, which is where that contractor was and supposedly was working on all of this themselves. And they had given the credentials to a contractor in India that they didn't even know to do the work. And they could identify that only through the activity of that account logging in and where it was logging in from. So there's a number of examples. Uber Waymo would have been caught with the downloaded sensitive files activity. That would have been caught. So this is the area that we've been investing in a lot. And you're going to, and I'll talk a little bit about some more stories that you'll see there. Before that, I wanted to jump into a demo of our product. I don't usually do this on these webinars, but I think that this is important to do for this particular one to show what that investigation and remediation and enforcement looks like. So here's our product. If you've never seen it before, this is the dashboard that you would come into, give you an idea of all the different alerts that have been triggered, um, how many users you have, and um, all, all, all the different information that you may need, quick dashboard. But where I'm going to spend some time here is around our triggered alerts. So triggered alerts would show you all the alerts that you have. These are all the SaaS applications that I'm currently managing in within this Better Cloud instance. So I'm going to click on Google. And I'm going to look specifically here at my critical alerts. So I can sort here. I'm going to look at my critical alerts. And what I'm going to find is that there's this been an alert triggered on August 8th. And it's email forwarded to Gmail. Back to this story. So what you see here is that we're ingesting all the settings, all the activity, all, all, all the basically we're connecting to all the APIs from all the SaaS applications that we support. And we're, we're pulling in and ingesting that data and we're looking for changes in that. In addition to that, and this is an important piece of information, we're enriching that data when it comes in. So it's not like we're displaying a text string to you of data. We are actually enriching the data and making sense of it to say, okay, with the data that came in, we see that these people are forwarding emails to these, to these accounts and it happened on these days. And more importantly, we've activated this by enrichment. We've activated this. So we now know who is Taylor.Gould. We can click in and now I have visibility and this is so important. This is the major differentiation. This is not just a log file. This is once we ingest this data, we're enriching it, we're adding context to it. And so now you look at Taylor and you understand, okay, sales manager forwarding corporate email to personal Gmail account. Let me look what other memberships, what, what groups is this person a part of? Okay what access to files. I've got all the files here. I can see all the different files that Taylor's got access to. I don't feel good about Taylor actually forwarding corporate email to a personal Gmail account. And so I can come in here. I can select that user. So now I've done my investigation. And of course, I could have clicked into all of these people, but I've done my investigation. And now I want to set the forwarding settings for this particular user, and I want to remediate this. So I want to actually come in here, and I want to disable the forwarding. So that would be my remediation. So this is an example where you would do the investigation, then you would remediate, and I will show you in a minute how you enforce that and automate that. But you could see I could take action in in on all 11 people who are forwarding their email. I could take action on a single person. So that's an example with Google. Now let's pull up an example with uh, Okta. So Okta, we have a new integration there. Um, actually, I'm going to show you the, the way we create the alert. That's a little bit better. Um, let me show you how we create the alert for Okta. So here's where you'd be managing these alerts and creating it. So here's a custom alert that we created where it's a user attempting to log into Zwara through Okta. And what you can see underneath here is that we've added conditions here to say, okay, it's Okta is the application. It's a user attempting to log in. The app name that the user is trying to log into is Zora. Zora, I'm not sure if you know, but it's a billing platform that people use. So really, this is something only finance should be using. And so the department does not contain finance is my last condition. So what this is going to tell me is, does somebody have access to Zora that shouldn't have access to Zora? 
And where we see this happening is in some organizations, there's going to be a sales ops person who has access. There may be somebody in, uh, there's definitely someone in, there's people in finance, but even within finance, there may be someone who's doing accounts payable who does not need Zora um, access and is still accessing it. So the idea here is that, again, you're looking for activity, but very specific activity. And so once you create this custom alert and someone attempts to log into Zora through Okta that's not part of the finance group, well, then you can do that deep dive. It's been enriched. You can understand who that user is and you can cut off all access to Zora. Um, let me show you another example of a, this is one where it is triggered so you can see the details. Um, we're going to go to Dropbox and we're going to see that um, we have team administrator added. So again, here's an example where I've got a lot of administrators here and uh, I have this admin at bettercloud.com, which is my service account. I've got, okay, I've got all these different people now. Now, who who is this Joey Walsh? And now I can drill in, I can start clicking around, trying to understand, okay, this person seems like, you know, I don't know. They look like a, a newer employee. Okay, yeah, they were created um, July of eighteen. I don't. I don't know why this person is set up as a, a super admin. So I can select that particular person. I could come up here and I can change the member's role. So this particular member is now going to be just a member versus an admin or user management admin or support admin is just a member. So again, gives you an idea of what happens when you can start enriching and you can start adding context. And ultimately that context gives you the actions that you can take and the remediative actions and steps that you can take against this user. I'll give you another example. Some people, uh, this is an important one for them. Um, in Slack, you may wanna look for all your users that don't have two-factor authentication set up. So again, I can see in this case, I have 54, which is a big number. That's a big, big number to not have two factors set up. And I can go into this set of users, select them. Maybe I want to just educate them. Maybe this is something I'm trying to roll out over time. So I can come here and if I want, I can send a direct message to this entire group. And I can come in here, I can create the message, customize the message with a very specific with, with specific um, uh, wording, and then send that out via Slack to everyone to say, hey, please go ahead and set up two-factor. Here's how you do it. Here's where to click. So this should give you an idea of the types of state-based and activity-based alerts. Um, you know, in terms of the other activity-based alerts, you can look for, um, for example, this is one where we were talking about before. Everyone mentioned that files being downloaded was the most important or most detrimental thing that could be happening in your environment. Well, here you could you have a custom alert, docs containing external. I don't want any of those things downloaded. So again, I'm not gonna spend too much time going through every one of these, but I wanna show you this, which is ultimately the policy engine, the enforcement engine to everything I just showed. So all those alerts, everything we just talked about, that is all here and listed as a trigger. So I can use that trigger. So I can say, um, when Google email is being forwarded to Gmail, then I want to send a message to that person in Slack to educate them. I want to, um, maybe I wanna set the forwarding settings on their email and I wanna kill that. And then I want to, um, you know, send an email to uh, to a group, a security group. So you get the idea where now you can respond to these incidences automatically without being involved, without, once you determine that that's something you don't want in your environment, you need to, you, you have to be able to do this in an automated way. Otherwise, it's very hard to keep up with that debt and it keeps building up. And so this is a very important part of the platform is the automation engine that sits there and does this work for you and, and is constantly monitoring for the changes happening in your environment and these, these, these issues happening in your environment. I'll give you another story, which this one is a very scary one. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to my slides. This is a very scary one um, that um, I, I forgot to mention before, which was this happened only a couple of weeks ago, a huge retailer, tens of thousands of employees, 
they had that issue where they had too many super admins. I think they had something like 25 or 30 super admins. One of those super admins made a settings change and made all of their email distribution lists available to anyone inside of the company. All email distribution lists available to read to anybody inside of the company. Now it was a setting change by a super admin. Now that means that an in-store worker, because in this case, every in-store worker has an email address, the in-store worker can read the exec at company.com, you know, retailer.com email address uh, and, and distribution list. And so that's another example where it's too many super admins, the settings are really easy to change, and the exposure and what that means for end users and then what they can do with that data, it's really scary. So let me talk about a couple future policy use cases, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them. So here's one where we want to be able to look and say, hey, are there credit card numbers or social security numbers in a specific box file or Dropbox file or Slack file or Google, or we do it for Google already, but basically be able to run DLP across your, your SaaS platforms and look for sensitive data inside of these files. and then. Look, you could even build that policy deeper. If you were looking at the UI before that I was showing, you could build a condition that said, does it have a credit card number and is it shared with a Gmail account? And if it is, unshare the file and email the user, their manager, tell them about this policy, tell them they're in trouble. Um, maybe third-party applications. That was one of the top items in that, po in that poll before. So here, maybe someone adds a Slack bot and a user just goes and adds it themselves, which they can do. And that, that Slack bot has access to historical chat, conversations, files, and maybe the third party is stealing data. Maybe it's just that they are a three-person company that decided to create a Slack bot and there's no security settings there and there's no security posture and you just don't feel comfortable. And you want to revoke that access and you want to pull back that Slack bot, uninstall that, remove the OAuth, um, and then letting let the user know what happened and why that happened. Maybe uh, I, we, we kind of gave this example already, but somebody has multiple failed logins to a specific SaaS application in a one hour period. And that one hour period is the important piece here. It's within a specific window. Um, and you, you, if it happens in a one hour period, 50 failed logins, you probably want to suspend the account and open a ticket with IT. So those are some future use cases. So uh, now what I'm going to do quickly is I have one more poll here. And the question is, with everything that we just talked about and all of the, the stories that we gave and the email forwarding and the open Google groups to everyone in the organization and too many super admins, people who don't work at the company and, and files being downloaded with sensitive data and, and things being shared with personal Gmail accounts. My question is, do you feel like when you hear this, would you drop everything to fix those things? Would you drop everything to fix the security threats you heard of today? Um, that this is an important question for us, you know, because to me, when I hear this, I hear yes, I hear that you, you know, you would drop everything. I assume that you would drop everything, but um, I am not an IT practitioner, um, and I am not, you know, and, and so it's interesting to to hear. Um, you know, I, I've seen customers' reactions, obviously, when we bring this to their attention. But um, it would be, yeah, I'm just very curious to see. Um, okay, waiting for a couple more people here. Okay, just a couple more. Um, we're at 60%, 65% voted here. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you the poll here. So, um, okay, that's that's what I would expect. So 90% nine, essentially saying yes. Um, right, some of the ones, for example, may, maybe, you know, you don't take into account things like the over spending too much or, or you know, the onboarding process. But, um, okay, this is, this is helpful. Um, Thank you very much. Let me go back to my slides here. 
So what I want to tell you is we a lot of what you heard today, these are stories that came out of our expert advisory team. So we have an expert advisory team. We created this team uh, in January, in December of last year. And this is a team of experts, people who've been at the organization for, for a while, understand not only Better Cloud, but the underlying platforms. And this expert advisory team is it, right now, at this moment, uh, through the end of the quarter, so through the end of September, we are doing free uh, consulting, if you will, to help people get Better Cloud implemented, get it set up. And 99% of the implementations, 99%, which is amazing, we have set up at least one automated policy. So back when I showed you the workflow, the, 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 the automation that we talked about, we're actually able to set up at least one of those for every single engagement that we have. So if you're interested um, and you're not a customer of ours today, even if you are a customer today, um, now would be the time to engage with us because we are doing this um, for at no cost. And and I think it, it makes a massive difference and, and you can get up and running quickly. I, I guarantee to the people on this webinar, I guarantee you, if you let us get Better Cloud installed in your environment, we will make it worth your while instantaneously. We will pay back. Everything you paid for Better Cloud will be worth it within two hours of working with our expert advisory team. We will definitely identify. We're, we're Again, we are seeing what I showed you today. We are seeing in every environment, no matter how secure they you believe it is, no matter, and this is not your fault. Again, I just want to repeat, this is not, it's not, it's IT's responsibility, but it is not your fault that these exposures are there. These exposures are there because the SaaS applications that you've purchased and that your users have purchased, they're built for collaboration. They're built for people to change the way they work. They're built for giving end users a lot more power so they feel like they're bringing their own applications into the workplace. And that is awesome. And that has changed the way that people are working. At the same time, it has brought on this whole new paradigm for IT that you can't really be blamed for these exposures, but ultimately you are responsible and ultimately it's gonna come down on you. The, or, the story I gave before about the email um, uh, distribution list being opened up to the, to the organization as a whole, the CIO was fired two weeks after that happened because of that incident. Because of that incident, they lost their job. And so was it their fault? I, I mean, you, we can argue that, we can debate that. But again, I guarantee you that within a couple of hours of getting Better Cloud installed and having our team uh, with you and, and looking through the in, in, in your environment, you will identify an area that, that you need to address.